you know, we challenged the group. We had to play complimentary football today. Um, that was a point of emphasis. This team was number two in the country in uh, turnover margin. And I just told the guys, we, we were plus six in the turnover margin. That's huge. That's a straight reflection of complimentary football. Um, proud of all three phases. A lot of good, you know. I'm sure when I meet with you again, I'm going to tell you about the improvements that we got to make. That's the, the reality of, of people that aren't satisfied. Uh, we want more, we want the best, but we're going to enjoy today. Uh, proud of the way they prepared, the way they played. Uh, for the most part, after halftime, how we came out with a, a sense of urgency to continue to execute in, on all three phases and improve. And so uh, it's a big win for this program. And uh, we're going to enjoy it as we go into bye week and get ready for the next one. I'll open up for questions. Second row up the middle, Tim O'Malley. Coach, we discussed on Thursday red zone defense was going to be key today. Two key red zone stops, one at the end of the half, and you guys kind of had a six-point swing there. What was the plan going into the week? You said it was, it was pretty much paramount for your success defensively today. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we stopped before the half, but then second half, I think there was one that they did end up scoring. You know, we had a good plan. Coach Golden did a great job. The defense did a great job of they do – some really difficult things on the red zone, you know, and but our offense was able to score in the red zone and we, we stopped them, which was was crucial um, one of those times in the red zone. So it's a point of emphasis. We got to have a great plan, but it's also a mindset when you get down there that we got to score touchdowns on offense and we got to force them to try a field goal attempt on defense. Uh, right next to him on to the left is Jackson. Marcus, we talked this week about uh, getting off to a fast start. You guys scored, scored I think, the first tw- uh, 14 or 21 points. What, 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 were the, what were the keys to getting off to that fast start today? I'd say this every week. That, those are outcomes. Those are observations. Like, a fast start starts with a fast first play and a fast second play. And, and everybody evaluates, I told the team, based off flows, the flow of a season, the flow of a game, we can't look at this thing based off flows. We got to look at this as one game, one life, one play, one life. And that's what I continue to preach to those guys. So the result of how we started fast was we executed on that play um, early in the game. And then as you look back at it, you say, okay, hey, yeah, that was a fast start. But more importantly, it's just a mindset. Like, win this play. That's the only thing that matters. Second row, uh, and second from the right, well, the classes. Sorry. Bye. Hi. Uh, yeah. Marcus, what can you say about Leonard Moore stepping in and making plays? Last week, obviously, with Benjamin Morrison out for the season, you know, preparing for Navy, you've said it before, it's an off-season, into-the-season-type preparation. He's had two weeks. What can you say about the job he's done stepping in for Benjamin? You know, with the snap of a finger, you can be thrust into the spotlight. Um, but I said this, I think, in a press conference last time I was up there, and I said it to the team, you earn the trust from your teammates and your coaches first before you're ever thrust into the spotlight. Leonard Moore earned the trust through fall camp, through season, and Benjamin Morrison goes down. He's thrust into the spotlight. Now everybody recognizes it, but he earned that through his preparation, the way he came in here as a true freshman, and, and, and he approached fall camp, approached each week, that, each week that way. And so that's what we got to continue to tell our guys, like earn the trust of your teammates and your coaches first, and when you're thrust into the spotlight, you'll be ready to go. Clips of NIU player. Why is it important for you to have that? You know, I don't do this. I don't do it every day. Um, but the most important thing is we can't lose the pain. That's that's what I want to make sure our guys understand is that you can't lose the pain. I don't want to lose the pain from that game because at times we are motivated by fear. At times we are motivated um, by we don't want this to repeat itself. And so there's times I got to remind them um, of that pain so that we can make sure we don't forget it. We got to use that. And like I said, we're going to be grateful for it if we utilize it and we learn from the lessons that it's taught us. But when you have success, sometimes you, you forget about that pain uh, of what NIU left in all of our, our hearts and our guts. And so there's moments that I want to reflect on that, and I don't want them to lose it, and that's kind of when I use it for motivation. And the follow-up would be, what do you think the biggest lesson learned from that was at this point, and how, I guess how much it fuels you to where we're sitting at right now? It's the preparation. It, 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 we had to learn. I don't – I go back and I look at that week of preparation, and 
I believe the physical part um, was was efficient, but there's a mental preparation, a mindset you have to have going in every week, and and that's to me. What I've learned as the head coach, our program has learned, and we got to take from that game is there's a mental approach. You better understand if you don't prepare the right way, you can lose to anybody you play, and I don't want to ever forget that. Third row on your left, Pat Morgan. Yeah, Pat Morgan. Several explosive plays today. You guys have the playmakers. What are you doing to get them loose to make the big plays? You know, we're trying to create one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, you know, I think. What you're seeing is a reflection of Coach Denbrock and our quarterbacks and Riley, um, the growth of their relationship, the ability to, you know, have multiple calls coming into a play and, and check into the one that we believe is going to have success. There's a trust between the quarterback and the wideouts uh, that's continuing to grow, and and Riley's throwing the ball with confidence. You know, those are some of the big play passes. Listen, Jeremiah Love is going to create a big play. He's got a chance to create a big play every time he has the ball in his hands, and uh, that's what to me you saw today. Some some really good connections and executions between the wideout and quarterback, but also Jeremiah Love being Jeremiah Love. Front row all the way to the left, Mike Billy. Billy Shrouth, uh, back in there for you, but at left guard. Maybe take us through what Coach Rudolph and your discussions were in terms of flipping him like that or having him uh, to a new spot, and what's he mean that he's back? It's great to have him back. Um, he's a heck of a player. We felt like this is what was best for this game, um, you know, based off, you know, some of the the previous evidence that we had, and we said, listen, that's what we think is best for this offensive line in this unit is to put Billy at left guard and keep Rocco in it at right. Um, Sam has done a great job in his preparation. Um, he's a selfless individual, and he's ready to go when his number's going to be called. But at the end of the day, each week your role is determined by the coaches to help us achieve the outcome that we wanted. Um, every week your role can change, but this is the role we needed for those offensive linemen today. Coach, can you talk about the difference in side of the ball? Your, your players playing with disciplined eyes and your linebackers able to flee floor to the ball. I mean, this is a, a challenging offense that, as you look at last year and this year, um, obviously there's more gun, but there's a lot more smoke and mirrors. There's a lot of stuff going on pre-snap that you have to play with clarity. You have to play with clear eyes. And that was a big point of emphasis. And for the most part, not, not, not the entire game. There was plays we didn't play with great eyes and we got exposed. Um, but for the most part, um, we play with clear eyes. And it's important to not let some of those motions and smoke and mirrors really affect where your eyes should be. The reporter to his right. Or to right. Um, coach, you spoke about complimentary, complimentary football, about you know you guys performed today. Do you personally believe you guys displayed a dominant team win? You know you guys caused six turnovers on the defensive side. You guys only was forced to punt twice. You know, and how big is a win like this um, building momentum towards the downstretch of the season? I think that's for you all to to tell us what type of win that was. Um, for us, man, it, we achieved the outcome we wanted. Right, and that's the ability to celebrate in that locker room. There's always room to improve. I'm not satisfied. Nobody's in that locker room satisfied. We're greedy. Uh, we want more. We want perfection. And so we let others tell us what type of win that was. We, we're going to celebrate it because a lot of people in that room put in a lot of work to achieve that. So we got to celebrate it. That's the outcome that we, we aspire to have. But then we also go back to work, and we, we really attack some of the deficiencies that we have, and we attack some of those, those areas that we've done well in. Um, but I'll let somebody else do the description of, of what type of victory that was. Third row to the right, uh, Tim Priester. Coach, could you just speak to the general approach going into this defensively and then how you had to adjust to the passing component? Yeah, I mean, you know, in the past, you, you've had a completely different defense when you played a triple option team. Um, but when they get into the gun, you know, it's, it's similar to what things you see week in and week out. And so we had to have the ability to, with the same personnel, play triple option defense. And then when they go to gun, be able to play some of the normal defense that we've had. Um, and they still did a good job. Them, I'm talking about Navy. They still did a good job. But Coach Golden had a wonderful game plan. Um, you know, 14 points is too much for greedy people like us, but they did a heck of a job versus an offense that hasn't been stopped much this year. And then as it relates to Shrouth, was he working with the first unit all week? When did you know for sure that he was going to start this, this game? Um, we, ha we had a thought on Tuesday, um, 
but you know he wasn't doing everything right he did a lot of the scouted reps but as long as his body was going to be able to give us the reps we needed we were going to plan on using him um, as our left guard but uh, that was still to be determined based off Tuesday Wednesday and ultimately Friday fourth row on the right Samson Marcus you know one of the September themes was handling success right like six wins 51 14 do you feel like you've handled it uh, and what do you think the biggest reasons why have been it's, it's uh, hopefully a mindset that we all have, right? Is that handling success? I, I mean, we won, but we were so much more, so much more. And that goes back to what we just talked about earlier is that mindset of what happened last week, the out, let's enjoy this thing. The outcome's what you want it, but the mental approach we're taking this week is, is so crucial. Right of how we can improve, and it's got to be hard. Like I just told those guys, you don't improve by doing the same thing you did the week before. Right? Human nature, gravity takes over. You're going to get worse. So we have to prepare mentally in a difficult way, physically in a difficult way for the next opponent if we want to truly elevate and improve. And so that's the mindset we have, you know, and hopefully that's the reason why uh, as a whole we've been handling the success uh, that we've been having the past couple weeks. Question opportunity for Coach Freeman in the middle, fourth row, Tyler James. Marcus, the ability to take advantage of all those fumbles. What, what is there an extra focus this week and because of the option and the ball getting being passed around more or just the right guys in, in the right place? Yeah, we wanted aggressive mindset defensively. Like I don't want to play football. You know that. You hear me say it all the time. I don't want to play football. I want to be aggressive and violent on defense, but Probably more of the emphasis was on offense because of the turnovers and fumbles they were creating on defense. And that's probably what I'm most proud of, right? It's like we had, we put a huge emphasis on our scout team. Every time there's a ball carrier, try to knock it out. And to have zero balls on the ground versus that defense is, is huge, huge. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Jack, Mark has talked about uh, stealing possessions. Were you confident with the defense getting a turnover today, let alone six? Yeah, I mean, that's always the key to the game is, you know, the defense has to wreak havoc on the ball and, and get the ball and create opportunities for our offense. Um, but you look at all, all phases of the game, I think we were able to do that um, from special teams to defense, obviously, and then our offense taking advantage of it when they had it. Second row on your right, Allison Hayes. How much of a challenge was Blake Horvath, and how do you feel like your defense handled that today? Yeah, I mean, anytime you play a, a triple option team like Navy who runs it so well, it's going to be – a difficult task. Um, and then when you add in the dynamic player he is and his abilities, like it makes it really tough. Um, but you know, we just said, you know, everybody has to do their job. Everybody has to be where they need to be um, to stop someone like that. And, and, and I mean, he hurt us early. And, and so we had to calm down and kind of make sure we were doing everything right. Immediately to next to me, Heather. Hi. Marvin talked about you guys not shying away from the pain of the How have you guys as players used that yeah, um, just you got to know every single day that you have to work. Right? You have to put in the work, otherwise you never you leave the outcome to chance. Um, and so that you know, every day we come in knowing what can happen if we don't, you know, try to live up to our potential or live up to the standard. And so we just use that as motivation that like we you know you either getting better or you're getting worse. Um, and so every day we just got to put in the work and make sure that doesn't happen again. All the way in the back with the camera, Yvonne Whitaker. Jack, um, throughout the day, Drake Bowen talked about you being a veteran in the linebacker room and really teaching those guys what it means to play against Navy and how to train your eyes and have eye discipline. What's your, what was your assessment of that? And you know, I guess what's your uh, grade on how the young guys did it? Yeah, I mean, film never lies. So when we turn that on, we'll see how everybody did. But. You know, gut, gut reaction was if you know for being in a young room, felt like everybody you know was assignment sound. Everybody knew what was going on. Um, they were able to slow the the game down and and realize what their responsibility was, which is the most important part. You can't let all the smoke and mirrors confuse you. Um, so I you know gut reaction. I think I think we did a really good job with that, um, especially like you said with such a young room. Um, that's very you know. It's very like encouraging to see that, especially against a, a, a tough task like Navy. Um, but yeah, like I said, the film doesn't lie, so we'll see. Jack, thank you. Thanks, Jack. Take your time. 
Hey, Riley. Hi, Howard. Hey. Um, so since uh, the Miami of Ohio week, you've had eight touchdowns, one interception. What, something changed at halftime there. What, what changed for you that you can look a few weeks back and say, you know what, like I've just loosened up. I've seen the field. What, what is it that has elevated that game? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. Um, I didn't know that stat. I really don't look at the statistics too much. But, um, you know, I think a lot of factors uh, come into play there. Um, I'll, I'll start with everybody that, that's been around me. Um, you look at guys like Sam Hartman, who gave me a call and, and really spoke to me about, you know, the opportunities that we had being quarterbacks at Notre Dame. Um, you look at Tyler Buckner, who came back here, um, going out to eat with him and having his perspective on everything, like, really helped me out a lot, and he, he doesn't get enough credit. I mean, he, he puts so much into this program now and has really big, been a big help to me. Um, every single teammate that's held me accountable, um, not only on the football field, but when it comes to my faith as well. Um, obviously, Notre Dame is a very spiritual place, and I think, um, you know, allowing Jesus to come into my life and, and, and change the way that I, you know, walk into a football game has really helped me out a lot. Um, I think I was hesitant and put a lot of pressure on, on myself, but uh, me and Coach Freeman were talking about it one time, and, you know, everybody goes into games. I, I feel like I certainly did the first couple of weeks thinking, what if, you know, what if I mess up? What if this happens? At the end of the day, um, if I go into a game thinking even if, um, you know, even if everything falls down and we hit rock bottom, you know, my Lord and Savior is always going to be there for me. Nothing's going to change with that. So that's been the biggest thing. And, uh, yeah, long answer, but there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of things that have helped me out. Third row to the left, Jack Sobel. Riley, it looked like Nate was playing maybe a little more too high and a little more man than, than you guys have seen before. Like, what, what were you seeing from their defense, and how do you feel like you were able to attack it for so many big plays? Yeah, all week. I mean, these guys run everything you could you could imagine. I mean, half the time, you know, they're dropping eight, but they got 10, 15 different ways to do it. Huge, you know, shout out to their defense because we were paranoid all week. I mean, we, we didn't have school this week, so we had extra time to get into the film room, but we still, like, came into this game like, you know, what the heck is going on back there? Uh, I certainly did. Um, but, yeah, yeah, we, we ended up kind of figuring out a little bit, you know, and uh, had some success. So at the end of the day, they got 11 guys to cover. So um, we just stuck to our game plan, did our thing. Standing up with the camera along the left side of the ball. Right here, Riley. Uh, Michael Furrow with Bird Sports Network. Obviously, you know you're one of the captains. You know, in four years, the Navy Shipman, you know, that is future leaders. They get to, you know, do what they get to do. As from a captain's perspective, what do you get to learn from the leadership playing such a rival as the Naval Academy? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Um, going into these service academy games for me personally is such a huge honor. Like to be able to play um, alongside these guys who I call heroes. You know, everybody, you know, the, these guys are, are the people that are going to be fighting for our country and, and, and are doing so much. Um, you know, they're a lot braver than me, and to be able to, you know, honor them in a game of football every single year over and over again um, really means a lot to me, and I'm looking forward to, to doing the same for Army. Um, for them to bring in all those, you know, pilots and, and have, you know, I think a couple um, kids were inducted into the Naval Academy while we were playing, and, it, like, those type things are just so cool to me, and it's such an honor to be there and witness that because, like I said, these are the heroes of our country, so... Um, yeah, it's really cool. Right next to me, Heather Dimitri. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm wondering how underrated, if at all, you think the time it takes for a transfer quarterback to just get, just gel, get comfortable, and just how long that process has been for you. I mean, because you're here in the spring and everybody keeps oh, he's here and everything's going on, but what's the reality of the timeline to truly feel in command of the offense? Yeah. Another great question. I think we're still figuring that out. Like, do I feel 100% confident yet? No, but some things are starting to become second nature in, in our checks and the offense. I mean, obviously, you know, I miss spring ball and a little bit of summer. So, um, you know, even even if I had been there for all that, like, it's it's hard to, to run a run a college offense these days, and uh, there are a lot of things going on. So, I think I'm still trying to figure out like wh whether we got it or not. I think you know having that little bit of fear of of, of you know, there's always more in the tank, you know, really helps us out and helps me out. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a work in progress, obviously, um, but I think we're getting better every week. Front row in the middle. Yeah, Riley. Um, you know, in the second quarter, I want to transition a little bit to the game. Um, you know, in the second quarter, you guys, you know, the defense ended up giving up a big play down, you know, to Navy. However, you guys come back and you answer, you know, and 
and that was a big momentum shift during the game. What does that more say about this offense and what type of confidence does that build, you know, leading down into the season? Yeah, um, obviously the, the last couple games we had started seven to zero. We were down seven to zero the last couple games and we had, you know, long drives to match that seven seven. Um, so I think just our ability to respond and reload, like Coach Freeman talks about it all the time. That's one of his biggest things. Reload, reload, reload. Like something bad happens, reload. Something good happens, reload. So like no matter what happens on the last play, you can't let it affect uh, the next. And uh, that's just like our MO now. Uh, we live by that. And, you know, take away all distractions. All you got to do is win the interval. You got five seconds on average of every play. Might as well win that one. All the way to your left, Mike Barry, yeah. Jordan Faison back, I guess, healthy now. And that one series, you, were, you just kept linking up with him. What was it like to have him back? And maybe that one series, I mean, you give him an extra long look. Was that something Coach Denbrock wanted? Yeah, I think, you know, in this offense and with this receiver crew, I really trust so many of them um, at this point to where, you know, half the time do I even have to look out there and know who's out there, who's running around. I know they're going to be there, and I know they're going to be on time. So um, for me to target him specifically, sure, there are some times where I want to get him the ball, right? You know, maybe I, I, I miss a throw or he drops one. You know, want to get him back and get our confidence back and go and let him know I trust him. But at the end of the day, like with this offense, whoever's in there, whoever's running the route, you know, I got no problem throwing it to him. Question for Riley, second girl's blue hat. Hey, how you doing, Riley? Congratulations on the win. Uh, you mentioned uh, Sam Hartman uh, talking with you, a former Irish quarterback. Uh, how many other former Notre Dame quarterbacks have you gotten a chance to talk to? And what, I guess, advice and profound information have they shared with you about being QB1 at Notre Dame? Yeah, uh, you know, I've probably talked to maybe five, five now uh, throughout my time being here. Um, it's 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 awesome. Every every single one of them, you know, has brought me down to earth. Everybody thinks of Notre Dame as just this powerhouse, and you know, I was a little overwhelmed whenever I first committed. But then once you get in here and start meeting these guys, like they're just normal dudes, just like me. And uh, every single one of them just told me like, don't take it for granted, and don't have any regrets. Like I talk about it a lot, but you know, I think regret only comes from missed opportunities, not failed opportunities. So like, if if you want to throw it and you don't you don't throw it and let it rip. Like, you're going to regret that. But if you throw it and something bad happens, you know, it is what it is. At least you gave it a shot. And every single one of them, you know, told me that, you know, along the lines and, you know, really just find myself, find my peace. And it's a huge honor, you know, to put on this blue and gold. And uh, every day I wake up, I, I really live by that. And, you know, whether things go great, things go bad, I'm, I'm waking up every day and I'm not taking it for granted. Quarterback, see you in Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no,